So how does a browser know which image to display or what CSS file to use to style our site or where to take us when we click on a link? Well, in these cases and many more, we give the browser a web address of the file we want it to access. Now, the proper name or the correct name for web address is URL, which stands for Universal Resource Locator. It sounds really futuristic and complicated, but it's not too bad. So what is a URL? Well, I like to think of it as a set of directions we can give to the browser about where to find a file. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One is with an absolute URL and two is with a relative URL. So what's the difference between an absolute and relative URL? Imagine we're at a friend's house and you ask me, where do you live? I could say 22 Long Street, 1701 CA, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. This is like an absolute URL. It never changes and it's always the same. I could also say, well, you walk out the front door and you turn left. You carry on walking until you get to Long Street, then turn right and then I'm number 22. This is like a relative URL. The directions change based on your current location. With an absolute URL, we begin with a domain where the file is located, like taptapkaboom.com. And then we tell our browser which set of folders to look inside of. Each name followed by a slash corresponds with a folder on the server or file system. And finally, we end with the file name and extension. With a relative URL, we start automatically from the address the browser is currently at without having to explicitly say so. We then add together a combination of relative path components, which tells the browser which folder our file is in. And then we end off with a file name and extension. Now, what are these relative path components? Well, let's get into that now. The first one is a slash. If we begin with a slash, it tells the browser to start at the top level folder or base URL of the current domain. This can be useful if you are a few folders deep and want to access a file close to the top level folder. The second relative path component is dot slash. When we use this, it explicitly tells the browser to use the current folder. The browser does this by default, so I hardly ever use dot slash. The next path component is dot dot slash. And we use this to tell the browser to go up one folder level. I use this all the time, it's pretty common. The final path component is a folder name, followed by a slash. This directs a browser into a folder with that name. This is super common. With a path to a file name, we can combine multiple dot dot slashes and folder names together to give the browser directions to the file. So when do we use absolute URLs and when do we use relative URLs? Well, you don't have to use a relative URL for anything at all, but they're often much quicker to write and a lot shorter, which makes your code a lot easier to read and write. I normally use relative URLs when the file is located on the same domain, especially if it's only one or two folders away. If you want the browser to access a file on another server or domain, you will have to use an absolute URL. For example, if you want to load a CSS file from Google Fonts or navigate to an HTML file on another site, you'll need to use an absolute URL. If you have a choice between using a relative URL and an absolute URL, ask yourself which one is going to be easier for me and my team to read and write, and which one is going to cause fewer bugs and fewer issues. Those are two really important factors to consider. Okay, let's cover some examples now. In this example, I want to create a link from index.html to about.html inside of the pages folder. And then I want to create a link inside of about.html that links to index.html. So let's jump into sublime text. And what we have here is an anchor element or a link. So when I click it, the browser takes me to some page. So inside the href attributes, I'm going to go for pages and then about.html. Now I could go dot slash here, but that's unnecessary. So I'm going to undo that, save this, and then go to Google Chrome. And then this is my index.html page. We'll get to the broken image. 
but I'm gonna refresh this and click on the about page. And there we go, it takes us to the about page. And you'll see that the URL changes, it's now got pages slash about.html. Okay, now let's go back to Sublime Text and open up about.html. And now I wanna visit the home page. So what I need to do here is go dot dot slash, and this will open up the previous folder. And I could then write index.html. So let's see how that works. And go back to Chrome, refresh here, click on the home page, and there we go. It takes me back to index.html, and this takes me back to about.html. In this example, what we're gonna do is we're going to find a file to put in the source attribute. Now, inside my finder, I have this cityface.jpg, amazing, I know, and then inside my image folder, I have this frogface.jpg, another amazing image, I know. Now, the file that we're in at the moment is our index.html, and that is in the root of our site. So here we are index.html, and now I need to find an image for this image element. So I'm gonna go for cityface.jpg, and I'll just start typing that, press return, then I'll save this, and I'll go to my browser and refresh here, and there we go. There is my one face image. Now if we go back to Sublime Text and go inside the image folder, what we can do here is type in img, which is the folder name, and then slash, which means it's gonna look inside the image folder, and then instead of silly face, we're gonna use frogface.jpg. And I don't want all of that again. I'm gonna save that, and go back to Chrome, refresh, and there we go. Frogface is there. So that is really cool. We've used a folder name, and then the file name with an extension. But now, this changes a little bit when we go back to Sublime, and go into Pages, and go to our about.html page. So I'm gonna open this up, and over here, what we wanna do is access silly face once again. So I'm gonna go for dot dot slash, which goes a folder up, and then type in sillyface.jpg. I'm gonna save that. Let's go to Chrome, refresh. I'm gonna to go to the about page, and there we go. You have my silly face. And then if we wanted to access the frog face, what we need to do is go dot dot slash and then back inside the images folder. So we went one folder up and now we're going inside the images folder for frog face. There we go, I'm gonna save that. Go back to Chrome and refresh. And there we go, there is my frog face. And so you can see here in Sublime that we've used different relative path components to access the same images because we started from a different file. In this example, I want to use a Google font in my site. So I found this great font called Bangers. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna then say, select this style. And then I'll press this button here. I'm going to select all of that. I'm gonna copy that, go to Sublime Text. And then I'll paste that like so, super. And you can see here that it says HTTPS colon slash slash and this long URL. Now that is an absolute URL and there's no ways that we cannot use an absolute URL for that. So there we go, two relative URL examples and one absolute URL example. Alrighty, that is the end of this video. For more stuff like this and to level up your creative superpowers, visit taptapkaboom.com.